Amen. Amen. To God with the glory, we finished reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. How many of us enjoyed that book? Amen. Okay, I'm sharing a link to the church um, platform now. A PDF format. Um, it details out, maybe not everything, but many of the references of the book of Isaiah in the New Testament, where it was fulfilled and all. Amen. Okay, so please, if you have um, a contribution to make, can, we, can I see your hands up? Wow. I have something to say. I learned something during the week. Ah. Don't let me volunteer you. Anyone? Auntie Peace. You would speak, ma. Yes, so what did you learn um, during the week? We read Chronicles, we read Kings, we read, we read Nahum, and um, yes, on Wednesday or Thursday, we concluded on the book of Isaiah. Um, so please, what did you learn? What did you read? How did it, um, you know, how did it get to you? How did it touch you? Please come forward. Hallelujah. Um, I did not read actually, but what I learned from the class, the little thing I learned from the class is that um, having confidence with God and also studying the word of God. So when you study the word of God, you learn more and get more confident to... to to be able to talk to other people about him. And when you have confidence, you believe, you believe in God. You believe in God. What, whatsoever you ask him will surely come to pass, like with faith. So. Thank you very much. Adasa, what do you have to share with us from the books, you, from the passages you read? Oh yeah, come, 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 come. We are waiting for you, be fast. We are waiting for you. So um, we read again about King Ezekiah. And you know, um, one of the, uh, uh, Chronicles or Kings that detailed out um, the issue, Chronicles, the issue he actually had that made him fall sick. That made him fall sick. I, I didn't touch on that, but Chronicles touched on that. And we realized that um, we saw a heart also that was repentant, that was willing to, you know, turn back to God, that this is my mistake, this is my error. And... Um, and was able to, and, and God restored him. And God restored him. I know, and God said that for the sake of this city, for the sake of my servant David, if we first gave a warning, the Assyrians are coming. And I think that was what God's intent was for wanting to take him early, early on. Just a perception. Though I'm not saying that's what it is so ahead. Just my own thoughts, please. So, and, um, you know, and God said the Assyrians are coming. But for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of this city, you know, I will prosper it and then I would, I would, I would, I would hear your prayers. And also, the letters of um, Shinakarib. Apparently, it was not one letter. <laughs> As in, it was torture <laughs> on the guy and upon the city. To the next thing that, I'm very sure they had, you know, they had, um, they had lost all form of morale. Those men were tired, and the only thing they could do was just to turn back to God. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Please go ahead. What I learned um, about what, what I read was actually not being tired. Like, God wasn't tired of the Israelites. No matter yeah. how stubborn they were, he would always make sure they would come back to the... And he would also punish the enemies, the enemies that came back to capture them. So I'm like, wow, that God is compassion. He doesn't... Because if he's a normal human being, a human being would have left them to die. He doesn't care. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> You know, the, the interesting thing is that we have a perception about God's interaction with the Israelites in the Old Testament, that it was an eye for an eye. We, didn't, we, we, not, we were raised to think that God really didn't show mercy towards them. I, mean, I don't know how many of us had those thoughts previously, but looking through, we realized that actually God dealt with these guys 
with mercy, with compassion. He, wasn't, he didn't really deal with them an eye for an eye as we had always thought. Thank God for Jesus. It makes, you know, the, the need for the priesthood of Aaron is no longer there. Now we can you know, interact with God and all that. Doctor. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Here is it, sir. Here it is. Please come forward, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, sorry. Praise the Lord. Yeah, the book of Isaiah is a very interesting book. And um, even before now, there is something I've noticed about the book. Um, apart from the book of Psalms, I get it right, is the book of Isaiah that is as close to the New Testament as yes. possible as I can yes. think. Yes. And um, there are so many things in that book that speaks about, in fact, if they read that book and they, tell, they ask you which is this book in old or new, living the stories, your tendency is to say this is more like a New Testament book because there are so many things there that quote and unquote, quote and unquote, run contrary to the Jewish belief of how God wants them to do some things. It's in the book of Isaiah you discover that God spoke about Gentiles coming back to him, bringing the Gentiles away into the temple, making everybody one. Yeah. And I was wondering was if the... Actually, was against all So laws. if, if yeah. the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all those others, if they had read this, probably some of the rules, and they understood this, probably they read it, some of the rules against the temple wouldn't have been that because God said so exactly. But there was a time that it will come to pass. And the time came, they didn't understand. So that's one thing I've got to understand that the book of Isaiah is a very peculiar. Isaiah saw into, into our days and he longed to see it. I'm sure he'll be rejoicing now that at least I'm seeing some things now. I hope he was, he's happy with the way the church is handling the power and the revelations we're having. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Uh, ah, wow. Okay, I've sent the link to the church group. You can just open it up. Several references of, you know, of Isaiah in the New, in the New Testament. Um, there, was something, there was something I saw that Isaiah was in, this, in the Gospels 55 times only. Matthew 55 times. The Apostle Paul referenced it about 56 times also. Altogether, references to the book of Isaiah and all the things that were fulfilled in the New Testament was, was over 60. So we can see that um, he, I, I consider him, permit me to say, more like a new, he, he functioned more like a New Testament prophet. You know, when, it's, it's an interesting story though, when um, that in Isaiah 7, when they came to meet him, and they were like, ah, we are under siege, Joe, while is happening, what is God saying? And then he said, the old virgin shall conceive. And in my mind, I'm like, how does this? <laughs> And his name shall be called Emmanuel. And I'm like, <laughs> were they not supposed to be looking for a virgin that would conceive at that point in time when there was wala going on in the city? So you would understand why the disciples would ask Jesus, would you now restore the kingdom of Israel? Because prophecy had been given. We are waiting for that fulfillment. Even though they may not have known, his, they may, I don't think they knew that it was the fulfillment of that prophecy in quote, in the sense that um, Mary was a virgin, she conceived him. They may not have known that. But when they saw the signs he was bringing forward, they were like, are you the one we are looking forward to? Or we should look forward to another. Which was the same thing also John asked him. Amen. You know, another reference to the book of Isaiah that, you know, we prayed the Pauline prayers, um, Ephesians 1, Colossians 1, that the eyes of our relation be, uh, the eyes of our understanding be opened and all that. And, you know, if we um, compare it to the book of Isaiah, we realize that it was taken from Isaiah 11. When he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, you would realize that he listed the seven spirits of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, counsel and might, um, spirit, of wisdom and, um, revel spirit of wisdom and understanding, fear of the Lord, and which one again is that? Um, I think I've mentioned six. No, there, there's counsel and might, there's um, spirit of the wisdom, wisdom and understanding, and then there's spirit of the fear of the Lord. 
Okay, in short, one word, yeah? what he took from that, the entire, um, the, the prayer Paul prayed for those churches were taken from those scriptures. And Jesus saying, he said that, um, behold, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to, um, to bring liberty to the captive. He also took that from the book of Isaiah. Amen. Amen. And one thing, you know, one, and, and, and I believe that the prophecies Isaiah gave, majority of it, you know, came after um, that encounter he had in Isaiah 6, behold, I saw the Lord. And he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And then the angel, having touched his lips, cleansed him, said that now you are cleansed. And I believe, that's what, I believe that encounter was what qualified him to be able to see into the future, to see into the days of Christ, and to declare the things that the Lord was saying. Amen. Amen. Sister David, you have something to share with us? You have a question? Okay, before your question, let me just also say this. Um, a contrast between Manasseh and Isaac. Did we really see that? Because the Bible spoke of um, Isaiah. Oh, I said Isaiah, of Isaac. He said that, and Isaiah dug the wells of his father. That means he revisited the things his father did. Then we saw Manasseh. After his father had pulled down the idols and everything, he went back and re-erected everything again, like his grandfather did. So you can see um, it's something in Isaac who, you know, went back to the works of his fathers and then he, he improved on needs because the Philistines had filled those wells, dug them back so that you no know, restoration and life can come to people. And then we see someone who, who went against, you know, the line that his father had, um, had, had, had told and then led the people back into sinning against God. And somehow you feel like, you, uh, I, we need to pray for our leaders. Sincerely, we need to really, really pray for our leaders. But sometimes I start Amos and Manasseh, and I'm like, okay, what went into you guys that? Because it wasn't like they made a mistake. Like this thing was totally intentional. You see the intentionality in the things that they did. The Bible said that he even went as far as going beyond the um, nations that the Lord had chased away from that land. He went beyond and further than what they did. So we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for our leaders that the Lord will help them, that they will stay in the line of God, they will stay in the sight of God, and that um, they would not, you know, lead the people into derailing before God. Amen. Um, Sister Debbie, may please go ahead. So that we don't make um, Manasseh look like a bad person. We learned from him that we have to um, pray for our leaders. That's a very valid uh, um, lesson to learn from him. But one other thing that we can learn from him, as we see in, um, in Chronicles, which we didn't see in Isaiah when we read Isaiah, is the fact that he repented before God. And God is really not after, he's not punitive. He's not looking out to punish and punish us. He's looking at how to discipline us, to bring us to the path of life. So when Manasseh, Manasseh prayed an act of forgiveness, God uh, forgave him. And the scripture says he came back and he lived, you know, he lived the rest of his life. He did well. So I think that's one other thing that we can take away from the life of Manasseh. He prayed and God heard him and God restored him back. So when we've gone astray and we ask the Lord for mercy, he gives mercy. Amen. Thank you very much, man. That God is... <laughs> oh, God. The mercy of God. I would say the mercy of God endures forever. That mercy was enduring, you know, on my nurse, sincerely. It was a typical example of the mercy of God endures forever. Because with what he did, eh? <laughs> ah, God. He said it, he took his sons through the fire. Like, he bought them as sacrifices. And God was still merciful. Ah, God. <laughs> Sister David, please go ahead. God is merciful, sincerely. Okay, uh, I've been reading this scripture and uh, seeing the promises, but I just felt I should ask, is it for now or we should look forward to the time it's going to come to pass? Isaiah 65 from verse 17 says, look, I'm creating new heavens and new earth, and no one will even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad, rejoice forever in my creation. And look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness, 
Our people will be a source of joy. I rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people. And the sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. No longer will babies die when only a few days old. No longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. No longer will people be considered old at 100. Only the cursed will die that young. In those days, people will live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of their own vineyards. Unlike the past, invaders will not take their houses and confiscate their vineyards, for my people will live as long as trees, and my chosen ones will have time to enjoy their hard-won gains. They will not work in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune, for they are people blessed by the Lord, and their children too will be blessed. I will answer them before they even call to me, while they are still talking about their needs. I will go ahead and answer their prayers. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat hay like a cow, but the snakes will eat dust. In those days, no one will be hurt or destroyed on my holy mountain. Hi, the Lord, I've spoken. Is it for okay. now or a time to come? Okay, who wants to help us to answer that question? Um, Apostle Peter also referenced that very same scripture where he mentioned the, um, the new heavens. And, Please, oh, I'm not answering it, oh, not now. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Broccoli before you come up. So if you think, um, if you think, if you think a portion or the entirety of that scripture is for now, can I see your hands up? The other option is that if you think the, 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 a portion or the entirety of it is for a time to come, when Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back, <laughs> because it, for some it looks like until Jesus comes back, that it cannot be fulfilled. <laughs> Broccoli, sir. Pastor Shane, we would like to hear from you on this very question, sir. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see us. You know, yeah, I think it's twofold, actually. Yeah. You know, some for now and some for later as things progress. The, the scripture that comes to mind is Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, as she was um, reading that. And I'll read it, you know, in my attempt to answer the question, you know. Okay. I don't want to quote out of um, Okay. He says that we have come but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. Right? To heavenly Jerusalem. Heavenly Jerusalem. That's what we have come to. Huh? to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. That's where we have come to. So we have come to... Uh, heavenly Jerusalem, you know, we have come to the, you know, blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, you know, we have come to Mount Zion, you know, that's our, that's our reality as believers, you know, we are in the world, but we are not of this world, we have been translated from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, so if we're in the kingdom of God, if we're actually living in that kingdom, then we shall have manifestation of some of the things that you mentioned, you know. We can't just die until our appointed time, you know. It might not be ver verbatim, okay, a hundred plus, but we'll fulfill the number of our days. That's what the Bible says. So in the heavenly Jerusalem, since we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places, 
you know, right now, we're seated with him. You know, it might not look like it, but that's where we're seated. You know, far above principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and all of that. So positionally, that's where we are. But we must now labor to enter into that reality, you know, by pressing in. That's our reality. Amen. Amen. That we don't know doesn't change the fact that that's who we are. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Uh, Pastor Tim, do you want to make an attempt, sir? Thank you, sir. Pastor Shim, we are waiting for you, sir. Amen. Before we, a thought came to mind, okay, a scripture came to mind just now. When, um, in adding to this, though, when Lazarus died and Jesus was to raise him, Jesus told, was it Martha or Mary, said that um, he that believes, um, even though he, he that believes shall not die. Even though he dies, he shall come back up. And I asked him, and I asked her, do you believe? She said, I believe on the last day. <laughs> so, so is that scripture for the future, or it's a reality can also come into now? And I believe it also corresponds to this very same passage that um, is being shared. Amen. Okay, so we know that, um, or we have been taught, that scriptures, uh, well, when you read scriptures, look at it, is it for double reference or it is literal, right? And um, prophetic words too, uh, we'll say, oh, it's for the future. But this particular one she read is actually two-sided. That is happening now in our own time, right? And then will happen, praise the Lord. When he said he will create, as in the literal new heaven, oh, sorry, new Jerusalem, right? The literal one will actually come into it, praise the Lord. And where he will, of course, there will be no cry anymore and all of that. Right now, people are crying, right? People are, but it's still, like uh, Brokunle said in that Hebrews chapter 12, that we are in, I mean, we are members of the heavenly Jerusalem. We are members of his family, of his kingdom. And if you look at, um, if you look at um, those from verse 17 down, uh, you realize that, yes, there are references even to, um, to Revelation, to the book of Revelation. Let's open to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation 21 verse 1. That speaks directly to um, the new heaven and the new earth. Revelation 21. Sorry, let me just... Uh, praise the Lord. It said, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. That is speaking directly to that particular passage. And we have said, Isaiah, uh, like the doctor said, is a man that God helped to yeah. see even to the ends of the age. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it was, I mean, for him, I'll be, one, I'll, I'll be looking at him and say, Isaiah, you, you really saw the end, praise <laughs> the Lord. Because at the end of the day, no prophet, even his uh, uh, writings or the prophetic words he script, uh, wrote down about the Lord Jesus, no prophet in the Bible actually captured it as literal and as uh, Brotuni was talking about him giving them an answer that looks, uh, is this what we are talking about and you are saying something else? But the thing is this, God spoke through him, and today we still reference, even the Lord Jesus referenced him with respect to his mandate here on earth in Luke chapter 4, when he was talking about Isaiah 61. And this actually helps us to understand that, see, when you are reading the scripture, don't just read it at face value. And we have been taught, Holy Spirit, please help me to see uh, what is being written here, what you are, bring revelations rather to me here. And so for, for context, what you just read, Sister Debbie, actually has two folds on his own time, when he was prophesying, a particular point in time, and then the end in time. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, just, yeah. just. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Pastor Shion, can we have your, your input, sir, to this?
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir. It's so okay. Good. Thank you, sir. It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I agree with what has been said. Isaiah was speaking of a future age because you see clearly said, I will make a new heaven. Revelations, a new heaven and a new earth. Having said that, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, is it chapter 6, that talks about those who have been um, saved, baptized, been, like been uh, tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away, it's going to be difficult for them to be restored again because they crucified to themselves again the Lord of glory. So there are certain things that God truly has prepared for different dispensations. But by faith, by working with God, we can derive those benefits now. So uh, long life, longevity. In fact, what Brotunde was reading or saying about John when Jesus said, there are some of you here that will not see death. It is not a doctrine, but God does some miraculous things. There have been at least two or three prophetic voices that claim, I'm using the word claim now, so that that's, they've met with John the Baptist and he's still alive. Uh, John the Beloved, sorry, not John the Baptist, John the Beloved. God can do such. So, but any promise we see in the Bible is for us now. You can receive it. That's just a simple thing. Even though it's going to be more widespread in that new dispensation. Isaiah didn't, uh, not Isaiah, Elijah. He didn't die. Did he? No. He was taken up to heaven. Enoch. And the Bible says by the word of two witnesses, a matter can be established. So that means that is a reality in God. It can happen. And there have also been testimonies to that effect that there have been people who have been translated, but those are beyond um, basic doctrine and the foundations of our faith. We can argue and the immature can mis misunderstand those things and it can cause it. But just know that every promise that God has given us is for now, even if generality of people will come into it later. So a new heaven, new age, living up to 1,100 years old is very, very, very possible. If I go to Japan, Go to Japan when um, I think they said something about their water or something. You see people in hundreds of years, I mean, by just natural well being. And I think it's been proven that vegetarians tend to live longer than those who eat meat. <laughs> so, because that was the diet God gave from the beginning, but that is just it. So, I hope I have not confused anybody. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> so forgive my rapper that I'm tying and tying. Okay, so the scripture says to us, 2 Chronicles 1 verse 20, it says, in Christ Jesus, the promises of God are yes and they are amen. I'm looking at this particular question that we're answering. I'm asking myself, how does this affect my life? What do I do with these answers that we have been given? The answer that I can take away is, what is in that scripture, all the things written down in that scripture, all the things read out, how do I deal, how do I relate with them? Lay hold of them, claim them for yourself now. Trust God for them now. The scripture says about people in um, um, Hebrews 11, Hebrews, is it 11 or 12? 11, where we're talking about the heroes of faith. He says some of them trusted God, believed God, and some of them did not even, they, they died believing. So can you go ahead and do that? Can you go ahead and trust God? All the, because the scripture says to us, you know, there is no death that is required again for any prophecy to be fulfilled. The death that is required is that Jesus died, and he already died. The scripture says, in Christ Jesus, the promises of God are yes, and they are what? They are amen, meaning they are fulfilled. So lay hold of the promises of God. Call them your own. Say these promises are mine. They find the expression in my life right now. My young will not die. You know, my baby, babies will not die in my hand, young. I will build houses and I will inhabit the houses. What are all, those, all of those scriptures? Lay hold of them. Call them your own. Embrace them. Declare that this is what we are going to have because that is what we are having in Christ Jesus. But we also know that this 
prophecies, there is a partial fulfillment right now. And there will be a full fulfillment because we know that Christ Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. He's coming again for his people. So there will be a full fulfillment where everybody on the face of the earth is tracking at the level of God. We have the life of God inside us and then there is no death reigning. And so we can have full fulfillment of what we have in that scripture. But for now, we have partial fulfillment for as many as are going to lay hold. And even if your dad laid hold and he died at age, like Brokunle said, you know, he might not die at age, uh, age 100, maybe he died 89, he died 70. D don't say because that happened, I am, I am not going to trust God for 100. You trust God because you really don't know what happened and you don't know the plans of God for his life. All of us are fulfilling the numbers of our days. Amen. So believe that for yourself, that all the things written in that part of the scriptures are for you in the now and here, not later. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sas. Thank you very much, Ma. Now, just to chip in this, um, you know, we, there's reference of two kings that tried to take away Sarah from her uh, husband. And if you, did, if you did the calculation of those of her age, she was probably around 70 or 80. Obviously, she wasn't looking 70-year-old woman. And she wasn't looking like an 80-year-old woman during those period. So something happened to her body that she wasn't looking towards that age. So people past before Jesus came have had a foretaste of these things. And it's the promise of God unto us. So I would just encourage you. You believe pursue it and know, choose, to, choose to have it for yourself. Choose to have it for yourself. It may look like it's for the years to come. It looks like until Jesus comes, this is to be fulfilled. But say for myself, I choose to believe this and I choose to possess it. Amen. Can we just rise up and tell the Lord, Father, Lord, I believe your word and I choose to pursue every promise you've given unto me. I choose, I choose oh God, to believe your word. I choose to believe, I believe the word of the Lord unto me. Written in this, even though they may seem far-fetched, but I believe the word of the Lord. Father, I believe every word you've said. Everything you've said, everything, everything, your word will not go back to your void without fulfilling what you've sent it to do. Father, I believe every word. I believe everything. I believe everything that you've come to give me life and to give it unto me abundantly, that life would be in this body. Life will be made manifest in this body. In the name of Jesus.